I'm Oriana Poindexter. I'm a marine scientist and an artist, and I'm based here in San Diego, California. Come along with me, and I'm going to teach you how to make cyanotypes today. Cyanotypes, are also known as blueprints, are one of the earliest photographic processes, and they're really simple to make. They only require two chemicals, as opposed to the many chemicals that are involved in uh, black and white film and color film photography that we know today. And to develop and process your prints, all you need is the sun and water. And so they're really simple and easy to make no matter where you live. Here in San Diego, I can go free dive for fresh kelp, get inspired by watching it move in the ocean, and then get out and create a piece of art without physical connection to the movement of the sea. We finally got to dive again today after having to surf for a whole month, <laughs> so. The cyanotypes that I make are contact prints or photograms, which are one-to-one -one reproductions of objects laid directly onto the paper. I like to use kelp, uh, but sometimes I have experimented with other types of algae, with rocks, shells, other things I find on the beach. You can use anything, really. The cyanotype process requires an emulsion of two different chemicals, iron salt and potassium ferrous cyanide. You mix the two, then paint onto your surface. I use watercolor paper mostly and let it dry. You wanna do this in a dark space. It doesn't have to be pitch black like a traditional dark room, just no direct sunlight. I usually paint my sheets in the garage at night. The emulsion will dry down to a yellowish color and once it's totally dry, you're ready to use it. You put your object on the paper, lay it in direct sunlight and expose it for about six to 10 minutes here with the bright sun that we have. I've made cyanotypes down in Antarctica where I've had to expose for up to 15 or 18 minutes. So it just depends on the intensity of the sunlight that you're dealing with. So after you've exposed your print in the sun, you begin the development process by washing it in water. It can be either fresh water or salt water. You rinse it until all the yellow color is gone and the whites shine through bright white instead of yellow. Then you just take it out, lay it to dry in the shade. And that color, that kind of typical blue color will, will deepen overnight as it dries. I wanted to start making cyanotypes actually because I have this dream of making really gigantic cyanotypes that are like as big as the kelp forest. It's actually a really cool history of women, science, cyanotypes, algae, and art. Beginning with Anna Atkins, who was one of the early practitioners of the medium back in the 1850s, when women weren't exactly encouraged to pursue scientific careers. She was a British botanist, and she would go down to the coast and collect algae, make pressing, and then from there make cyanotypes. I like to think that the thread of that history pulls through to this place. Ellen Browning Scripps, the woman responsible for most of La Jolla and the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, was known to walk these beaches and collect algae and make pressings at home with them, along with her sister. I learned to make algae pressings from Jen Smith, a professor at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography when I was a student there. And that actually has planted the seed and got me dreaming about making cyanotypes with fresh kelp. So with my work, I really just want to inspire people to feel more awe and wonder for the ocean and, and the things inside. I like to photograph and uh, make cyanotypes of, of the kelp forest because it's, it's a way to translate that awe and wonder that I feel when I'm in those environments onto paper for other people to enjoy uh, if they can't get out there themselves. 